Hey everybody and welcome to my hatchet class guide from Jaws of the Lion. I know a lot of people have been really hyped about the new DLC coming to Gloomhaven Digital with all of the Jaws of the Lion characters but also a lot of people who have been playing the physical game of Jaws have been asking me for guides. So now that we have it in digital I can uh, I can freely record as I like to uh, with the previous guide. So yep here we are we're going to take a look at the hatchet. If you are watching this on the day it comes out, the chances are you are watching on Patreon. I have started a new Patreon page for me to be able to better support the channel and for people to better interact with the channel. You can find it over at patreon.com slash mandatory quest where you can sign up and get early access to some of my videos. Also, I'm going to do some Patreon exclusive videos potentially if we reach some funding goals, including a Envelope X sort of review, Envelope X kind of guide, if you like, on that particular element of the game. Something that I've said that I would never do, but a lot of people have bugged me about it and I thought, hey, that will be a really good sort of stretch goal potentially for the Patreon. So if you would like to support the channel in ways other than just viewing and subscribing, which I do also really appreciate, you can head over to patreon.com slash the mandatory quest. I've also now created a merch store. So if you would like to get yourself your own mandatory quest t-shirt, you can head over to www.mandatoryquest.com now and you can pick up a t-shirt, a hoodie or a sticker. A few people have asked me before about whether or not they could just get uh, a t-shirt. So I obliged so if you'd like to go and check that out as well and if you sign up to the patreon you actually get discounts on the merch store so make sure to check that out first if you are thinking about picking yourself up a piece of merch also don't forget if you'd like to catch me live you can catch me over at twitch.tv slash so i'm going to be streaming an absolute boatload of jaws of the lion content for the next couple of weeks too okay these have been a long time coming let's get into the hatchet so the hatchet class from jaws of the lion and if you are playing the jaws of the lion dlc for gloomhaven digital like me so this character is a ranged dps damage style character very focused on doing a very high single target damage quite like a ranged scoundrel in a way got some similarities to the scoundrel in certain ways um, has also some aoe abilities also tucked in there but it does have a, a hand size of 10 has starting health of 8 that hand size though of 10 is uh it's not really 10 which we will get into when we get into the cards uh the health of 8 is not the lowest of any character in the game but it is still fairly low so we're not a character who particularly likes getting in the uh, in the middle of the fight we're definitely someone who wants to stay behind some kind of tanky character who can stay in front take the hits for us while we can concentrate on doing our damage so according to uh, the digital uh, devs uh, the strengths are great range damage definitely agree with that reasonable array of varied second abilities yeah we actually do have quite a lot of active abilities which we will get into lots of options to play with this character some of them are quite enticing to play with too which we will we will get through um has a couple of favorite axes definitely we got our two axes there which is a very uh, key hallmark mechanic of this character um should try and keep out of the front nine as a weakness definitely with that eight health don't want to be doing that uh, needs to go pick his axe up after use yep again linked to this favorite axes deal there is a core mechanic about that so when we get into the cards we'll look at that and hasn't been able to remove their hat since childhood but who would want to i mean look at this hat it is very fancy and it is a very fancy hat which we will come to shortly too also just one of the most fashionable i think characters uh that we get in gloomhaven i love the style of this character personally aesthetically i think it is one of my favorite uh, gloomhaven characters that i've come across so far i just think it's a really cool kind of bounty hunter van helsing kind of witch hunter style look going on here so let's get into the starting cards and let's see what we're playing with okay so here we are with all of our starting cards i will go through each card individually but you can see selected already what's going to be our starting hand for the hatchet but we'll go through all of the cards here to explain what they do and why we're taking them why we're using them and uh yeah basically why they're good and why they're not so good so the favorites now this is the kind of hallmark card and mechanic of this character and this is what gets you excited and this is all about those axes that you have so the favorite says you may add plus three attack to any of your ranged attacks by marking it with your favorite after the attack ability is resolved when that target dies it will drop your favorite if you loot that hex return your favorite to this active ability 
to XP, and that is a permanent ability that goes out in front of you into your active area for the rest of the game. Now, it's a lot of words, and to be honest, even I actually, the first time I played the hatchet, I struggled a little bit to get my head around exactly the timing of this. It's a little bit weird. So if we just go over the top of it again, because it's quite important to understand how we trigger this, when we trigger this, and how it all kind of fits together with this character. So it is that we may add plus three attack to any of our ranged attacks by marking it with your favorite after the attack ability is resolved. So importantly, we get basically we can perform a ranged attack. We can add plus three attack to that ranged attack and after that attack has resolved so damage has been done and everything then the last thing we do similar to when you would resolve something like a push or a pull at the end that kind of um sort of phase if you'd like that would be when the favorite token is added and then when that target dies it's going to drop the favorite so it's like you've lodged your axe thematically into the enemy right and kind of marked it if you like uh, this is kind of like a, a mechanic that you might have seen in uh, in some other kind of um, RPG style games, you know, where you kind of designate a target if you like, and uh, you've added some extra damage, and you're going to get some bonuses for attacking the uh, the character or the enemy that has the favorite token on it, which we'll get to uh, with some of the cards in a minute. But essentially, this allows you to do one really big attack with a ranged attack to do that plus three attack immediately. And then that token is going to hang around on that character for a little while. And we're going to try and interact with that token. But the two important things to really kind of understand here is it is ranged attacks only that we can add this plus three attack to. And it is also sort of lodged in that enemy until we either get it back somehow or the enemy dies and we go and loot uh, that token back in some way. Okay, so it's, it's a little bit weird to, to, to get your head around. But this is also one of the cards where I said earlier in the intro that although we do have a 10 card hand, really we actually have a nine card hand because the favorite is pretty much the turn one play for every single low level hatchet. I mean, that's what you're going to be doing. Um, there will be other options later on, which we will get into. But in terms of what what we're going to be doing, especially at level one, we're going to be probably playing the favorite on turn one because it just makes so much sense to just get it going nice and early. So very straightforward uh, ability to want to wanna play. You've got 17 initiative here, which doesn't really matter usually when you're playing these kinds of effects. You know, if you're playing something for the top action uh, and it's a passive ability, it doesn't really matter on the initiative that you play it. So sort of a little bit irrelevant here. But the bottom action is actually fairly decent here, although we're probably never going to use it. <laughs> it's wound, target one adjacent enemy, then move three jump. So not something that we are interested in using at level one or for many levels, I, I imagine. But we is, is something that is actually a fairly decent bottom. So worth kind of considering that in some scenarios where perhaps the objective is not to kill all of the enemies, perhaps actually it's better to to use the bottom in in something to do with like a movement based you know get to the exit style scenario for example might be uh, a good use of the bottom of this instead of maybe the top but it's still you're going to need to kill things probably along the way so you might still just burn it for the top but you know we, we can always uh, consider that later so that's the favorite that is kind of like the key mechanic of the character and it's good that it's the first card so we can immediately kind of just go into the next cards with the favorite in mind already so the next card that we have here that we're also taking is retrieval this is attack two if the target has your favorite return it to its active ability so this is kind of interesting this is a melee attack this isn't ranged which is kind of important because this character is predominantly uh ranged based so any kind of melee attacks are always going to be a little bit awkward for us to be able to do because we're not the kind of character that's really hanging around in that area maybe a little bit more playable in certain scenarios or like the way that it it sort of pans out but really this is not a great value effect um for this character you know attack two is basically just a default attack you know any any card can be used as an attack two so that's nothing special um but the only thing that we can do here is that we could potentially get our favorite back which is also a little bit strange because surely we want to just kill the enemy so then it drops the token and then hopefully we can come and pick it up anyway so it's a little bit odd you might occasionally use it if say for example you make a slight mistake perhaps you 
use your favorite token on a enemy and then actually your allies all team up and you kill it quite quickly and your tokens just hanging around or it's it's a little bit awkward perhaps the enemy's gonna die to wound over a few turns or something i mean that there, there might be some corner case situations in which you may want to get that token off of that character 46 initiative is not a great initiative uh, one thing that i think they should have definitely have put on the weaknesses for this character is the initiative we have a fair few early initiatives as we go, and we will discuss this as we level up too. We have a fair few early initiatives, but they're not super, super early. We're not a character who's going to go um, earlier than characters like the Scoundrel, for example. But we also don't have a good mix of late initiatives. So we're in this kind of weird kind of early to mid range a lot of the time with our initiatives, which, which works fine for a ranged character that we are. But it does mean that, especially with melee abilities like Retrieval here, we are put into a bit of an awkward place because we can't do that really nice kind of go late then early kind of combo where we can take two turns in a row, making melee attacks a little bit safer for us to perform. So we don't really get that. So that's another kind of knock against the top of this card is also this 46 initiative. Bottom of this, though, is very usable for us. Move one, loot one. I know that I'm not usually a fan of loot cards. If you watch any of my other guides, loot cards are, you know, I really just dislike them, or at least if they don't have a good other half, you can play for the majority of the scenario, or maybe they're one big burn loot that, that it can be useful on characters like, for example, the Spellweaver has a big burn loot and cold fire, and you know, the top is very good. The bottom is a really big loot, and you can get it back with Reviving Ether, so it's not quite as bad. But this character actually thrives on the favorite, and we get our favorite token back by looting it. So if we can move uh, within sort of one hex of uh, where the favorite token has been dropped, we can pick it up. So the idea of retrieval really is that we can maybe use a pair of boots in combination with this if we need to, to increase that move. But the idea here is that we're not going to have to land on the favorite hex. Um, just in case maybe an enemy, for example, ends up stepping on it as well, covering it up or something like that, because it doesn't count as a uh, like an obstruction or anything towards enemies. So it is possible that enemies could, in theory, you kill an enemy, it drops the token, then another enemy sits on its spot. This will still give you an, a way, hopefully, to get that token back and keep using it. Next up, we have Close Cuts, which is actually an excellent card. Uh, attack three in a two hex pan there. It is uh, Leaping Cleave on the Brew, and this is an Inox, so it fits very nicely into the kind of Inox style, if you like, of card. Uh, the awkward thing about this, though, is that we are mainly a ranged character, and this is a melee attack. It's a, it's a good melee attack, but it is a melee attack. We're not usually going to find ourselves in a situation where we're going to feel comfortable being next to two enemies. And because of the initiative problems that this character has without the lack of being able to go early um, then late or late then early, sorry, to get the two back-to-back -back turns to kind of make melee attacks a bit more safe like they are, say, on the Scoundrel, for example. They have a few more tools at their disposal with those super late initiatives. It does just feel a little bit awkward. And if we end up not killing the enemies with this attack three or our allies helping us out and also doing some damage here to try and kill them, if we take damage from this, uh, from some enemies, that could really um, could really hurt us, especially if you play on increased difficulty. So I feel like it, it is a good card that can definitely be played if you play on lower levels of difficulty. And also if potentially you're just in a scenario with lots and lots of low health Kind of swarming style enemies that you might might come across i feel like it's a it's a fairly decent card for those types of scenarios where you don't have to worry about being attacked uh you know for like three from each enemy you might only be being attacked by one and perhaps you have an item that can help mitigate that in some way then then i think it, it's much more playable the bottom is attack to move to which is something that usually I'm, I'm a huge fan of having uh an attack on the bottom or a move on the top because that's an out of order kind of um ability right it's in it's on the wrong half of the card almost which usually means that you can do like things like double attack in a turn or double move and move a big distance or something or combo with maybe a passive ability on, on another half of a card and still get some kind of benefit so there's usually some kind of combos that can be done with these kinds of effects the problem again with this character though is the ordering it's an attack before the move which would mean that an enemy would have to be next to you this card in general i think if it was on a late initiative if we were looking at a, a, a a card that had maybe 70 plus initiative i think we'd actually be looking at this card in a much different way but just because of the initiative that it is i think it's tough you could maybe do it early i suppose so going maybe super early you know if it was over over 70 and maybe under 15 maybe things would be slightly different here uh, maybe we'd be considering something different 
with certain items i think there might be some opportunity to make this better but i don't think the average player is really gonna have access to them and also certainly you're not going to be probably using those items if you are playing the jaws of the lion board game so i don't think that's something that we should really consider at this point but this is a good card and undoubtedly this is actually a good card two really good abilities on the top and the bottom just the wrong character or the wrong kind of style of play really here for us next up we have center mass which is attack three range three uh, 24 initiative we've got move three push two on the bottom this top attack is really what we're going to be using the favorite with a bunch this is really what we want to be using with our favorite so we can immediately do an attack of six using center mass. So we have the favorite in play. We're going to attack an enemy. We're going to use our favorite token here to get that plus three. Get the three from center mass. So that basically turns it into an attack six range three at level one, which is pretty nuts when you consider that most other characters don't get anywhere close to that. This character has some insane single target damage numbers it can put up uh, at level one and at low levels. It's 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 pretty crazy. This, this character gets off to a very, very fast start. 24 initiative as well means that we can probably do this um, uh, before the the enemies or at least on an en on a enemy before it can act which is another important element of this character you want to kill enemies quickly before they act rather than uh you know using maybe traditional cc kind of control abilities like stun and disarm and stuff like that you're, you're not really going to be using much of those abilities instead you're going to be playing like the scoundrel you're just going to try and kill it right you know kill it before it gets to act that's a big part of your game and uh, 24 is maybe not as early as you'd like but it's certainly early enough to catch a lot of enemies out you've actually got a pretty decent uh, ability on the bottom here too move three push two in a uh, particular scenario where there are traps and things like that i think that this is a very good option just some way for you to be able to uh to interact with traps or like hazardous terrain things like that probably going to be playing it for the top most of the time but in the odd scenario here or there the bottom's going to come in in really good use and that's always a hallmark of a of a good card for me like a, a really good versatile card here that you're you're, you're going to find a lot of use out of and next up we have stopping power which is a card that doesn't quite make the cut it's very very close if we had one more card it probably would be the one that would make the cut out of this bunch we've actually taken a slightly different card than stopping power we've, we've gone for extra lift over stopping power but stopping power is a very good card and i could actually see this making the cut for a lot of people over extra lift stopping power is attack three range two with plus one range with push two so another nice way potentially with that air element to be able to interact with traps or hazardous terrain or just get an enemy out of your face the range on this at two is uh it's, it's pretty usable range two is not too bad it's maybe a little bit close for you but you probably wouldn't have too much problem landing that range two so having that range three is a nice thing to make it a bit more easy to land but yeah as like i said this barely barely misses out and to be honest I think a lot of people are probably going to use stopping power over extra lift, but I actually prefer the initiative on extra lift at 21 over the 35 here a little bit too. So that's a bit of a consideration for me as well. The bottom of this is a move three with jump. Immobilize target all enemies adjacent to any hexes moved through. So this is the kind of next, uh, this is another burn ability that we've sort of come across, right? We've only had one burn so far, which is the favorite, which is like a must burn kind of card for us really, because it's, it's our mechanic that's how we play but this has got a burn on the bottom of it too and we have to be so careful on this character about burning cards i think in jaws of the lion the scenarios are a little bit shorter and you don't really need quite as much movement to to in theory kind of finish them stopping power i think is, is one of those cards which is just barely doesn't make it for me personally but i think a lot of people will probably play stopping power and might choose to not use extra lift mainly because we've only got one um, generator for air which we've got coming up shortly and we can only really afford one card that actually needs that air to be to be good so um so that's the reason kind of for that next up we have double throw which is our big big damage card our double burn uh, you know, I'm not a huge fan of the double burns, but this is a pretty spicy double burn. On the top, we have attack three, range four, target two, which is, you know, a decent amount of damage there. It's not the best in the world, but you chuck the favorite on that maybe to attack something as well. That could be a pretty decent attack across two things. If you just need a few things dead or towards the end of a scenario, you wanted to get two XP and you really wanted to create that air as well to help you get some more XP on something like stopping power or extra lift then you've got it there but it's it's nothing crazy 
It's uh, it's probably about average, maybe a little bit under average, actually, really, for what, what a burn uh, kind of a burn attack might look like. Um, on the bottom of this card, though, is really what you what you want. <laughs> and this is double the value of your next attack this round. Now, this is your big elite and boss mission killing card. If you are going on a boss mission and you know that you are going to need to kill a boss and you want to kill it quickly, or if you particularly an elite or something that's causing you issue, then this is the card for you because this plus maybe even something simple like center mass with the favorite that's an attack of six now suddenly you're attacking for 12 right with this now there is a bit of setup to have to be done because of course this is a bottom action so you you're going to have to be in the right place to be able to do that so that is worth considering uh, but in theory if you set this up in a good way you can absolutely do a huge attack use your plus three buff from the favor use something like center mass and uh you're laughing right you're going to do a huge huge attack just make sure that you have advantage though because uh missing on that attack will uh will be pretty brutal um, so this, this card is another one that doesn't really make the cut because just on the average scenario, it's not very good. It's really good only for the boss killing scenarios. So when you do come across one of those, consider bringing double throw in and perhaps you can actually drop some of the kind of weaker cards that we have here, like the Sorrenting uh, Barrage or something like that. But I feel like um, for now, this is going to be left in the sideboard most of the time. Uh, just remember that when you do have a boss mission, this is a card you might want to consider or you should probably be considering. Next up, we have Disorienting Barrage, which is attack one, range three, target three and a muddle. 51 initiative. And on the bottom here, we have move two. All adjacent enemies then suffer one damage. Then we do a move one. All adjacent enemies then suffer two damage. Then we have a move one. So let's do the top first. So attack one, range three, target three, and model. Nothing super crazy here, especially at level one. It's actually probably pretty bad at level one um, on its own, really because of the fact that you're going to have lots of minus ones in your deck. You know, as soon as you start your character, your attack modifier deck is pretty miserable at level one. Uh, everybody's is. So, you know, there's going to be a lot of times where this does no damage and just applies a model to a target, which is kind of like the softest amount of control really available in the game. You might save a couple of points of damage. You may not. It, it's very swingy. I like model when it's used in combination with things like curse. On its own, I think it's an okay thing to just have added onto an attack, but it's not something that usually makes or breaks a card for me. The Sorensen Barrage top is pretty underwhelming, but we will be getting to a card shortly, which will really help it out. In fact, actually, we might jump straight to that card after we've done the bottom of this. So we got move two, all adjacent enemies suffer one damage, and then move one, all adjacent enemies suffer two damage. Realistic you could just make a few enemies take three damage here you could just decline a lot of these moves here to do three damage i don't think this is particularly bad i mean this is kind of like a better version i guess of rumbling advance in some way because you've got the extra damage here and you've got a lot of extra flexibility with the movement that you can do to try and get this damage in again something like a living spirit of course this is going to actually be very very strong so i feel like it has some situational use against living spirits which do come up a little bit in the Jaws of the Lion campaign. So you've got some flexibility against dealing with, with that particular enemy type. But against most enemies, it's probably not really a burn you want to be playing. And like we said before, we're a, we're a nine card class. So our burns really have to be something special. And this really isn't that special. I wouldn't get too hung up on, on playing the bottom of this. Even even when it, the situation might seem quite good, I would I would hang off because you really don't want to commit uh, your stamina to, to this bottom effect unless it's going to be killing some uh, some enemies nice and cleanly for you. Let's go down to Fancy Hat because I feel like we can't really talk about Disorienting Barrage without talking about Fancy Hat. So this is really the, the two the two card combo that we're going to be playing a lot of at level one. So Fancy Hat, it's got 12 initiative. There's some text on the top of this card that I don't think I've ever read. <laughs> um, move three, shield two, create dark, one XP, and shield two for the for the rest of the round, of course. I mean, I guess in a pinch, if you really needed to, if you really wanted to get one XP um, and you had to survive X amount of rounds and you couldn't kill anything and this was your only way of maybe staying alive, I, I, I don't know. Dark is not an element that you care for as a character. There are characters um, from Jaws of the Lion that do, but you are not one of them. So it's just not, it's not a great, uh, a great card for you. The bottom of this though is really what sort of puts the card uh, up, up front really and really what makes the card great. You've got add 
plus one attack to all your attacks this round so a nice buff there for all of our attacks and of course when we when you see something like this this is immediately is going to work very well with anything that targets more than one thing so suddenly our disorienting barrage actually becomes attack two target three range three which actually is a huge damage increase at level one potentially we get some nice flips even if we get maybe our minus ones get flipped at least we could still do a point of damage maybe and of course we could always chuck the favor in as part of one of these two so this is a quite a good combo for starting and that 12 initiative is going to ensure that we have a good opportunity to do that nice and early get that muddle on for the round the initiative as well of 12 makes it a very good just default move two card i'm a big fan of just having low initiative just because of the flexibility they give you just to be used as a move two. keep that in mind too that if you just need to go early to kill an enemy before it can act fancy hat will also give you a good a good opportunity to do that back up to the top so let's go to power pitch attack six range three two xp and a burn on the top i would say this is pretty bad value really yes we have some good combination here with the favorite but it's burn it's very all in i think the only time you really want to do this is you want to live the dream with double throw and power pitch right i think you do double throw bottom and power pitch top with the favorite and you attack for 18 i mean that is completely possible and uh yeah pretty pretty broken really at level one again make sure you have advantage you don't want to be missing on that because that's even worse you're going to be burning through uh two cards but yeah that that's obviously your boss killing combo if you can line it up with that terrible initiative uh, that you have here of 60 or 64. So not a good initiative. It's not a card that you're really going to consider using the top four at all in most scenarios, except maybe to get two XP towards the end. Uh, the bottom here is move three and create uh, air. This is basically the fuel that we need for extra lift or stopping power if you're playing that instead this is why you need it because we don't have any other generators that aren't burns at level one so this is our only kind of reliable generator the 60 initiative as well is actually our latest initiative at level one and it's our latest initiative for quite a long time on this character which is again the problem that this character has that your latest initiative being 60 is not really that late compared to some enemy types especially things like living corpses and stuff like that you really want to be going you know past 70 you want to be going upwards of, of 80 really this character is one that always kind of you can go on 60 and kind of hope and and there's a, a fairly good chance that enemies do go before you but there's always going to be those times when unfortunately 60 just doesn't quite do what you want and you're, you're still going to end up getting yourself maybe into trouble or the enemy's not moving closer to you and then you're not being able to do your attack anyway so but really a move three is just consistent movement which is good at level one and it makes an element that is useful for us will empower one of our attacks later making it a bit better and will actually uh give us some xp as well hopefully in the meantime so yeah power pitch is it's, it's a necessary it's a necessary card because of this bottom really for us and this initiative even though we would like better next up we have follow through so this is a card that does reference the favorite in it it's attack two range four with add plus two attack and gain one xp if the target has your favorite this is the only card that we have at level one that actually does focus on this but this makes it a very good follow-up card literally follow through after we play something like center mass and the favorite then we can go straight into follow through afterwards ranged four attack four is way above curve so we are doing very nice for ourselves with this character we are doing a lot of damage yeah this is um this is very very powerful and we're, we're very happy to have it 39 initiative is a little bit awkward i guess it is sort of edging towards that no man's land of somewhere between 40 and 60 in which it's basically just hope the bottom is move to push to target one adjacent enemy so similar to center mass something else that maybe we can use here to uh, to interact with uh, enemies and with traps and things like that in addition we can consume air to actually make it uh, move uh, to do an additional move to after the push so we can do move to push to and then potentially we can do uh, an additional move to action afterwards potentially give the opportunity to move towards an enemy push them away and then move towards the enemy again or move even further away to create even more gap it just gives you that flexibility to potentially get that push in without maybe worrying about the enemy still moving towards you because you can kind of move towards them push them away and then move it further away again so you can kind of keep that distance potentially from from the enemy if you want to or or perhaps move towards a different enemy entirely so it's just flexibility i don't think this is a really great use of air i think this is a pretty underwhelming use of air 
really. And it's certainly a level one when we only have one guaranteed way of making it, which is the, the bottom of power pitch here. I don't think we're going to be using um, it, the bottom of follow through. As well as the top is obviously a very good attack. So really, that's, that's our priority here with this card. Next, we have second wind, which is heal six self, create air on the top, two XP and a burn. This is um, unfortunately not a, a great value proposition, really. Um, this character can do a silly amount of damage and we shouldn't really be taking much um, much damage ourselves if we're doing things right. We should be killing things very quickly. We should feel pretty safe. The initiative is 18 though, which is a pretty decent early initiative for this character. So that, that's one of the reasons why we're playing this. And the bottom is move three, very reliable. And then we've got add plus two move and gain one XP if you killed an enemy this round. Now, that might sound like super good. You might be thinking, okay, great. We can move up to five. Yeah, that's going to happen a lot. And that's going to be real useful. The problem with this kind of effect, especially when you pair it with something like movement, is that realistically, movement is very purposeful in Gloomhaven. It's very important. It's one of the core mechanics of the game. Learning your movement, um, learning enemy positioning, enemy patterns, the way that things work, keeping track of enemies is all a way to improve your game. But movement is very purposeful. So it's not often you're going to be in a situation when this additional plus two move is really going to be like, oh, wow, I really needed that. But chances are the plus two move might allow you to get another loot pile that perhaps you couldn't get to a loot pile or a chest in that turn or something. Maybe you're going to do it in two turns. Maybe you'd be able to go get it or perhaps you might be able to go and get your favorite token if for some reason they're really far away maybe you actually killed them with something like you know extra lift you know they were range five away so now you actually do need to run a really long way to go and pick it up with second win so that there are a few times when it might happen but certainly don't view this card as a move five the next card is care package that's attack two range three heal two target one ally adjacent to the target of the attack this is actually a pretty nice little uh, little card actually i quite like this with the attack two as well we could always use the favorite with this so this could actually be like a really decent opener you could uh, attack for five with the favorite not too shabby i think you might probably consider using center mass instead but it's certainly if you've got a red guard or if you've got any other kind of tank if you're playing in the wider gloomhaven campaign or even if you're playing a two player i found this to be quite good like if you're playing hatchet plus red guard in like a two player campaign i think like the top of care package can actually be quite nice healing is is surprisingly useful when it's in these small doses and you get incremental value you know giving up an entire action to heal on something like second wind and it's a big burn not really worth it but being able to do a bit of damage to the enemy and in the process heal an ally is actually pretty nice removing something like a poison or a wound is is going to be very useful there's a lot of wound in jaws of the lion a lot of the enemies deal with wound having some way of removing wound from your allies is going to be super useful the bottom though is also pretty usable move three heal one range one and create earth now earth is not an element that we care for but it is an element that demolitionists use and the void warden both use so it is a usable element if you're playing jaws of the lion characters together and also just a little heal again removing that wound potentially that you might get is really really nice it's 30 initiative move three with a little bit of upside on it i think that's pretty good the absence here of a of a dot for enhancing this heal one is going to upset a lot of people <laughs> who have played a lot of traditional gloomhaven who would be like hang on a minute why can't i enhance strengthen onto that because this character would certainly be a character that could benefit a lot from advantage and strengthen effects it's not here because it would be way too powerful way too good uh, you will find that the Jaws characters in general are a little bit more balanced in some areas. And this is a good example of an area in which that is. You know, you you don't get that. But potentially, this could have been that if it was um, if it was an old Gloomhaven class before we knew the uh, the, the troubles or the, the ease of play that that brings and how powerful that enhancement really is. So, yeah, no enhancement there for you. So a bit sad for that, of course, but I'm not personally sad because... I think it's too good so it's good that we just have a usable move and a heal here that, that we that we can use at level one next up we have uh eight extra lift which is the card that i said i'm taking over stopping power I, I like this one it's the attack two range three we can get an additional attack and we can get an additional two range for uh, for consuming air we definitely want to be consuming the air the attack two at range three is worse really than stopping powers attack three range two Potentially, if you're in a scenario in which you have, say, wind demons, you're against wind demons, I would actually maybe consider, like, just 
going off of the wind plan entirely pretty much and you would definitely would rather have something like stopping power because you can just close that gap to range two and get the attack three in instead i think that's going to be more useful we do already have a lot of push though i think with the bottom of um with the bottom of center mass potentially although maybe a little bit unlikely and follow through we have a bit of push here so i feel like we've we've kind of got push covered in, in certain ways so i don't really feel like we we need maybe the push on stopping power here also sometimes push can be a little bit counterintuitive with this character because of course if you're pushing an enemy further away if they then die before you kind of get any closer to them it's further for you to travel to then pick your token up from the favorite so if they die and you've pushed them into a trap that's right at the back of the room and now they're five hexes away you know, now it's going to be a bit more difficult for you to go and get your token back by using something like retrieval for example retrieval is only a move one and even with a good pair of boots you know you're not only going to get it up to like a move three so you really want that enemy to be a little bit closer so often you're going to find that push is something that you're going to decline a lot of anyway so i i just personally find that that extra lift to me you know maybe getting that extra uh, that extra range could be quite good on hitting that artillery the sort of safe distance away from us maybe we're not putting the favor on them or it's a new enemy who's really far at the back of the room an artillery or something like that i just find um that that, that extra range can sometimes come in a bit more use although you know both of them kind of suffer with the same problem which is that if you do use the favor with them and you use the push or if they're really far away then the, the token's quite hard to get to but yeah. personally i think I, I i like the flexibility of having some extra range to allow me to get those enemies that are really far away and and hard to get and of course the other reason i like it is the 21 initiative the 21 initiative is is better to me than the 35 much more usable the bottom action here is move four on your next four move abilities add plus two move we can gain uh, two xp through the charges and it creates air the turn we play it it doesn't create air every turn that we uh we use it it's just crazy air the turn that we play it not a particularly great action um, and burn to be honest there'll be some scenarios in which this actually makes them a bit of a cakewalk like scenarios um from base gloomhaven that require you to just get out get to a certain point and just leave uh, or deal with a lot of difficult terrain for example this will make that very very easy so there's definitely spots in which extra lift bottom is actually pretty usable but it's not something that i think i would really rely on and as we said before again we're down to nine cards because we've burned the favorite we can't really be burning cards unless they are really doing something special for us and uh the bottom of this most of the time will not be so but the top is is a good attack so that's why we're bringing it that and the initiative fancy hat we have already covered so those are our 10 starting cards i feel like out of a lot of um characters maybe from base gloomhaven hatch is actually a very hard character to come up with all of the um all of the choices at level one i think there's a lot of viable choices there's lots of flexibility here you know with double throw coming in potentially for boss scenarios with close cuts potentially coming in for swarming style scenarios where you, lots of the enemies kind of get up to you nice and, and close and you just need to kind of kill them quicker so having a little bit more multi-target is more useful and of course swapping power just being swapped for extra lift so even though we've uh, we've chosen these these cards, there are absolutely opportunities here for you to mix and match a little bit at level one. So I will put up on screen now the level one cards in the physical version of uh, Jaws of the Lion. If you would like to check them out for you board game players, makes it a bit easier for you guys to pick them out. So if you'd like to pause the video here, if you're playing the physical game, then you can uh, select all of your cards. Okay, so here we are at level two for the hatchet. I've had to jump over into the Guildmaster mode to film the rest of this uh, so level two we've got two really good choices of cards this is a tough one at level two which one you're going to pick we've got repeat shot and we've got ricochet so repeat shot we've got attack three range three add plus two attack and gain one xp if the target has your favorite very very good attack obviously gives us another kind of bonus if you like like follow through here gives us another kind of bonus potentially doing an attack of five 
um, immediately after maybe we've done a huge attack with the favorite and something like center mass you know we do an attack of six then we follow it up with an attack of five i mean at level one that is killing pretty much every enemy that you're going to come across uh, if you're playing on like normal difficulty right it's it's going to be killing so many enemies uh it's it, if you've got a troublesome enemy you can just delete them in two turns pretty much with this character so that is insane value for such a low level card this is definitely the kind of ability that you would usually see on higher level cards but obviously the mechanic of this character is very very all in on this favorite mechanic and uh yeah it's uh yeah well here's the payoff it's really really good the bottom is attack five range three you got initiative 31 on the card the bottom is is actually a, a pretty decent attack if you just need something dead in a pinch towards the end of a scenario obviously it's not great value because the top is an attack five repeatable whereas this is just an, a one-off attack five but it is out of order right it's on the bottom of the card rather than on the top so it does allow you to maybe do a double attack in a turn so if you were coming right down to the wire and you really needed to kill an enemy on that turn otherwise maybe you're going to be attacked and killed or you're going to exhaust or for whatever reason you have something in your back pocket where maybe you could do a really good double attack so also something that you could use to apply the favorite with as well if you wanted to and then you could follow it up maybe with with follow through on the same turn so you could use the bomb of repeat shot with the favorite and then you could immediately follow up with the top of follow through on 31 initiative is not the best initiative to try and do that on a course but you know sometimes you get into these weird situations where you need to figure out a way to win and uh, there's definitely some opportunities for the bottom to help you there the other card is ricochet another really good card we've got attack two range three then we have attack two targeting a different enemy within range two of the target of the previous attack ability so a nice little kind of bouncing effect here where yeah it ricochets exactly as the card says right off of one enemy into another enemy enemy another good card here that would play well with the favorite also combos quite nice with our fancy hat ignore the cards down here at the moment it's because uh i have not uh gone through to, to change the cards so these aren't our starting cards so go back to level one if you'd like but yeah unfortunately when you go to level two on Guildmaster, it just defaults defaults all of these cards but yeah those are not the cards we're using but fancy hat we definitely have and we're definitely using and fancy hat bottom is a really good combo with uh with the top of ricochet giving us uh two attack threes potentially i mean on 12 initiative again that's six damage very very strong also our attack modifier deck on this character can get very good at drawing plus ones and also some plus ones with some added benefits to them as well so with some extra status effects like wound and poison and stun and there are, there are some good things that we can draw so multiple attacks on this character are pretty pretty good so uh, i think ricochet is a very good pick for the top as well 56 initiative is yeah worse than the 31 i mean i you know i know that i hate initiatives that are in the 50 range anyway really between about 40 and 60 i just generally dislike the initiative because it it is just just guess where you're going to go because you you have no clue uh it, it really doesn't put the power in your hands to to really plan your turn you're very much going to be reacting rather than being uh, proactive on, on the scenario so yeah not a fan of the initiative at all the bottom is on your next four attacks when where possible one enemy adjacent to the target suffers two damage so you've got a nice little splash damage here effect again very thematic to the name ricochet is a great name for this card i think it, it sums up both halves of the card really really well not again not something that's going to be particularly useful because again the top is really really strong here and uh, you know we can't burn cards just just because we want to and this is going to be a recurring theme with this character we're going to have lots of nice things dangled in front of us uh that are going to require us to burn them and you know we're going to be down to potentially nine cards and then be like hey do you want to burn another card and it's possible it's possible towards the end of a scenario but certainly not something we'll be considering early on i think against living spirits this can do some work against high shield low health enemies this will do work um and that's good i think it's good to have a very reliable top effect uh, or bottom effect that you're going to be constantly using and then pair it with something that when the situation comes up you actually find that the card is pretty useful so I, I actually i actually think it's a pretty decent pairing because in certain situations the bottom of ricochet could 
could be quite useful for you so two really good cards here honestly i think you can go either way with either of these two cards because probably at level three we'll be coming back anyway and taking the other card that we didn't take spoiler but that's probably what we're going to be doing so here it's going to be down to our kind of personal preference now i prefer to take ricochet here first mainly because I actually feel like the attack two and the other attack two are going to be better um, placed at lower levels, right? You know, attack twos can generally get scaled. They scale pretty poorly towards the end of uh, of uh, of uh, your leveling process. You know, as you kind of level up, the enemies get stronger. You know, attack ones, attack twos, they all start to sort of not look quite as good. Um, so I feel like the earlier you can take Ricochet, probably the better it's going to feel. Also, we're going hard on Fancy Hat. I really love Fancy Hat Bottom. I mean, you, you've got to play a card called Fancy Hat on this character, right? I mean, it's illegal not to. So I feel like you don't really care about the 56 initiative because we're playing a 12 initiative with it. So the downside of the 31 versus the 56 doesn't really come too much into my uh, my decision making here at this stage. So I'm going to take Ricochet. But Repeat Shot is probably, probably the better pick overall in terms of if you just want to do raw damage, it's probably the better pick. But... Like I said, the thing is, is that you're going to be killing things so quickly sometimes with with follow through, like the favorite in, with sense of master, then follow through anyway. That it feels like, you know, repeat shot is actually going to become a little bit more valuable on higher levels. So it's a very, very marginal decision choice from me here. But I actually prefer Ricochet. I like the flexibility. And also because I usually play with three or four mercenaries, I feel like Ricochet is also just maybe a little bit better for those types of scenarios. Maybe a little bit weaker because we're going to be drawing two, two modifiers cards early. So again, this is a character you really want to get your perks going. Try and um, complete your battle goals as soon as possible with this character. Really focus on your battle goals. I think it will make the character much stronger. But uh, but yeah, I feel like Ricochet for me is just, just it just, just nudges it. Just, just edges it uh, over repeat shot here. Okay, so the card that's going to come out for Ricochet here, it's pretty simple. It's going to be Second Wind. Second Wind is not really a uh, an amazing card that we, we really have. The 18 initiative really is the best thing about it here. And of course, the move three is useful, but that plus two move isn't really going to be doing too much for us. And that burn on the top is really not, uh, not good value, not something that we really want to play uh, or have to play because hopefully we will never be in a situation when we actually need the six health. We would only be burning it for the two XP. So not really something that we would want to consider so it's a pretty simple pick for me here i take second wind down and bring ricochet in losing the 18 initiative is a bit of a consideration but i feel like we can get away with it a little bit here at uh at lower levels but that is something to consider if you do find yourself struggling a lot perhaps you might actually consider getting rid of something that's a slightly higher initiative i could see you potentially getting rid of something like extra lift instead if you wanted to try and just move away maybe from the air kind of generation plan because perhaps it's uh perhaps it's a little bit too hard for you to combo off if you're not comfortable reliably comboing off uh the kind of uh, air generation here with power pitch and with extra lift then perhaps you might you might consider swapping that out but i feel like stopping power is is a bit easier because of the attack three right it's like you don't really need the air for stopping power to be good but you do kind of need the air for extra lift to be good so it's really if you were maybe feeling like it, it was a little bit difficult and you don't really feel like you're you're getting that air on extra lift as much as you'd like then i could also see that being a fair one to bring out here okay let's go to level three okay so level three i alluded to it earlier that we will be probably going back for our other level two but we have fearsome efficiency and sharpened blades so fearsome efficiency the top is attack six range four if this attack kills the target one enemy adjacent to the hex in which it died suffers x damage where x is the amount of damage the target would have suffered in excess of what was needed to kill it so basically if you're a magic the gathering player it's like trample but it's onto an adjacent figure right so whatever damage would have uh that was not needed to kill it that overflowed the overkill amount of damage will go onto an adjacent figure instead now this is an attack six range four with the with the favorite potentially this could be a bit more also you know you could your eyes might be lighting up thinking maybe double throw could be a good option for that which i think yeah it's it's not too bad but ultimately this is actually a, a pretty bad value card in general um just because of the fact that we are putting a lot of resources into this hoping that we're going to get some kind of good draws or going all in on getting some good draws 
and uh, and maybe having the opportunity to kill two figures or at least kill one figure and do a decent amount of damage to another it's yeah i think it's very swingy it's very very swingy not particularly reliable we have to be so precious about our burns and this is a top burn as well i feel like bottom burns you can carry a little bit more right because you know your top action is your most premium slot so for a top action to be a burn and usable it has to be pretty damn good or have a, a way of maybe being repeatable or it's a passive effect or something so you're always going to take a top burn action in Gloomhaven much more seriously than a, a bottom burn action because a bottom burn can always just be used as a move two for whatever it is. And you're probably not going to worry about it. But if you're using default attack two actions, unless you've got some kind of specific strategy going on, you're probably doing things wrong. So yeah, not, not a good start really for, for this card, unfortunately. I think it's a bit too all in. I think in the best case scenario, you maybe kill two things. In a worst case scenario, you don't even kill one thing and you feel really bad about it because you you flipped your miss, you flipped your a minus two and it just doesn't, it doesn't do what you hoped. And uh, yeah, you're one card down because of it. The bottom is significantly better though. You got attack one, range three, and you can add plus two attack and gain one XP if you killed an enemy this round. So this is good. This is a ranged attack. Um, so we don't have to uh, we don't have to move. Allows us to maybe do a top ranged attack and this. Again though, this feels a little bit like if we kill an enemy, we get the plus two attack. There's gonna be a lot of killing of enemies that this character does. But will we reliably get this to be an attack three range three? I, 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 I don't really know. You're certainly not playing it, you know, with that intention. You're probably just pairing it with something and, and seeing what happens. You know, you're, a lot of the time this might just be used as a move two. Um, and sometimes it may be used as an attack three range three. Uh, again, this card, for a card called Fearsome Efficiency, it's actually fairly random whether or not it's going to be good or not. So I, I don't feel like Fearsome Efficiency is particularly, particularly a, a great name for this card. I think this is a, this is a bit of an all-in card. Like, let's hope that we, we kill things. And certainly there, there will be times when you know you're going to kill an enemy because it's on low health. And you think that you know, the bottom of this card will be triggered fairly, fairly reliably. But oh, I don't know. I, I, I just... Yeah, for 50 for 58 initiative as well right in that no man's land of initiative that i hate uh just yeah it's, it's this is a hard proposition this is a hard sell for me the other card is sharpened blades which is i think much better than fearsome efficiency you've got on your next five attacks add plus one attack and wound now this i actually i actually think is pretty decent i quite like we're starting to get into the realms of mm, getting tempted now maybe burning another card especially with something like disorienting barrage and if we use something like fancy hat you know we have a lot of potential with sharpened blades here to have you know an attack three target three muddle and wound which is of course incredibly strong and we still have two more charges of sharpened blades for it to potentially used on on future attacks i guess the only problem with with sharpened blades is that we are uh, like we kill things so quickly that sometimes wound you know, wound is a, is a really good effect, but sometimes you might just kill it. So, you know, you might find out that you would have killed it anyway, and then maybe the charges were wasted or something like that. So you don't get to pick and choose when you add the plus one attack and wound, right? It's on all of your next attacks. So this will be best used when you first open a room. You want to, you want to, in your active area, ready to go, so that when you open a brand new room, everybody's on full health. You can get the max kind of uh, value, if you like, out of it. Uh, it's certainly not something that you're going to stop in the middle of a room and play. You've got 44 initiative on the bottom here, and you've got move four, consume air to get plus two moves. This could be a move six, which is, uh, which is actually very, very strong. and something this character does need. You do need a, a good amount of movement to be able to get around, especially as, um, as a ranged character, you sometimes find the ability to just sit but you do need to be able to catch up when like the dust settles, right? You sit at the back of a room, maybe you don't do too much movement, whereas melee characters are kind of moving little and often as they push through the scenario attacking enemies. As a ranged character, you might not be doing quite as much, especially if you've got really long range on your attacks, right? So you're, you know, you've got a, a range five, you've got no reason to move. So you, you do have to be a little bit careful with that. So extra bit of movement on this character is nice. So out of these two, I think they're both fairly uh, i mean i think they're both fairly underwhelming i think fearsome efficiency is a bit of a trap really i think it sounds a lot better than it really is um sharpen blades i think is is overall an okay value card but back here we had a very good card at better initiative than these two too 
if Sharpened Blades maybe had a really late initiative or maybe a stupidly early initiative, perhaps we might consider it here. Either either being able to go earlier or potentially being able to go that super late turn would be really useful. But unfortunately, it's not. Both of the, initi the, the initiatives suck on both of these cards. So Repeat Shot, we're just going to go for the best damage dealing card that we can get, which is Repeat Shot here, which, which, is, which is very good. So we're happy to, to go back and take this. It always feels bad to not take the actual kind of level up card from from the level i found but you know sometimes you have to i felt like uh this character has maybe some other build options in which maybe some of these other cards could be useful in certain ways and perhaps once we get into the wider gloomhaven campaign and we play it a bit more in the main gloomhaven kind of campaign and we have access to more items more combinations of different characters with the, the jaws of the lion characters maybe we might find a bit more design space to use some of these but i'm gonna take this guide from the perspective that we really need to just uh, make sure that we're we're sorting ourselves out that we're self-sufficient and we're doing a good job just as the hatchet regardless of who we're playing with or, or what scenario we're we're kind of in so for repeat shot we've got a few things that we could potentially take out but i think we'll probably be looking at taking extra lift out here just because realistically hitting this air is maybe a little bit difficult if you don't want to play power pitch um, before it so i have a very sort of strict combo here of having to play it extra lift is is probably the the easiest thing to drop here so we will we'll be dropping uh, extra lift okay on to level four okay so level four we get ripped from the flesh and we get overwatch probably one of the best named cards i think uh, that I've seen in Gloomhaven, but maybe not one of the best abilities. Very thematic, but maybe not. So, Ripped from the Flesh is loot one. If an adjacent enemy has your favorite, you may return it to its active ability. If you do, the adjacent enemy suffers two damage and gains wound. That's on 20 initiative. So, a pretty unique effect here. Very thematic that you just go up and you basically just pick up your axe that's lodged in there, uh, their torso or the head or wherever it is, and just sort of like lever it out. And of course, doing some damage as you leave that, if you as you pull that axe out and obviously leaving the wound there too. So incredibly thematic for the name of the card and what the card does. However, mechanically for how it functions, it's a little bit awkward again, because realistically this would require us to move close to enemies on a fairly early initiative 20. Uh, the chances are that if an enemy is you're going to want to try and kill an enemy the the with this ability, right? With Rip from the Flesh, really, you're trying to kill an enemy that's either got two health or maybe three health if they haven't got wound already, right? You know, that's that's kind of like the range of what you're trying to do with this. So you're trying to do that. If, if you are doing that, then you can easily kill enemies from safety with your ranged attacks. Like, there's no reason why you would really want to do this aside from of course trying to maybe kill something with a high shield like a living spirit so there are there are situations where it, it does play in but generally speaking like an average enemy who doesn't have much shield or maybe like shield one and things like that like realistically you have some really high damage range attacks that you can do on these guys especially if they have the favorite token on them right we've already seen repeat shot and we've already seen follow through so we have good ways of actually kind of attacking an enemy that has the favorite token on them so this is a, a little bit risky the loot one is i guess kind of like a nice side effect here to potentially be able to get some loot and you're gonna want to get loot on this character absolutely uh, gold is a very good way of improving your character but we do have a loot card already that we're kind of using so uh, we don't really need to but it is on the top so we could move and just loot you know with it like it is a, it is a usable card when nothing's happening you know in the downtime when nothing is going on this card does still kind of do something but yeah i think it's it's a very interesting thematic uh, thing um i love the way the way it's going and the way it's described and the way it, it acts but I, I do feel like it's a little bit counterintuitive and we just have safer options if our objective here is to do two damage um or maybe three damage uh, to an enemy i feel like we have safer ways of doing that without having to walk uh, right up to an enemy's face the bottom is heal three range two add strengthen and gain one xp if you killed an enemy this round now this and create air as well and now this should be actually what gets you a bit more excited about this card i think a nice heal action there with an okay range range two it's pretty decent for a heal three on the bottom of a card actually this is just a really good initiative and an ability to do when you don't need to move 
healing either yourself to, to heal a bit of damage off poison wound or heal an ally potentially that's going to be really good obviously if you can get strengthened on yourself that is a huge boon for this character you, know, you do a lot of big high value attacks so missing feels brutal on this character at times just like it did on the scoundrel so being able to get strengthened is going to be really really um big compared to something like fearsome efficiency where you might get the plus two attack like i feel it's like you don't necessarily have to uh, care about getting the strength in here for this still to be like a good value turn. Like I'd be really happy if I just attack an enemy maybe with center mass for uh, potentially six with the favorite and then I heal myself for two, right? I don't get the strength and benefit. I didn't kill anything. I would still be really happy with that outcome. So I felt like um, Rip from the Flesh here is um, it's, it's not a, an outstanding card by any means. But also generating that air on the bomb is a nice other kind of guaranteed generator for an element too. You're probably going to end up using the bottom more so than the top. But thematically, there might be a few spots for you to use the top and that would be kind of cool. The other card is Overwatch, which is attack three, range four. And we can consume air to get plus one attack and plus one range. So this could be attack four, range five, which is actually, you know, that's pretty decent as well. You know, that's nothing to... Uh, to put your nose up at uh the next five times an enemy ends a move ability within range five perform an attack to range five action targeting that enemy on the bottom here too overwatch again another really thematically named card overwatch an ability from xcom that's where i know it from but i'm sure it's probably been in other games too very thematic for what it does uh, a big range attack uh, that when an enemy moves into your line of sight you get uh, like an attack of opportunity almost on them because they you're kind of set up waiting for them like setting a trap so yeah i think uh, two really good thematic cards here at level four the difference between the two i think is is pretty small between what you would like here i think we kind of have better attacks than overwatch on the top already and we've already seen that we've got repeat shot which is kind of better that we got at level two you know ricochet which is you know maybe a little bit worse but is against two targets so potentially with fancy hat could be a little bit better you know this thing's you know the, it's gonna max out really in an attack five with fancy hat which you know it's not really a good fancy hat target either so i mean they're they're both not particularly great i feel like the overwatch bottom as well is a little bit of a trap you know, being able to do these little attack twos against enemies it's probably not something that you really really want to do i would say uh interesting idea obviously it could be a lot of damage but again burning cards not something that we really want to do. We have to be very, very careful with that. And we will continually uh, monitor that. If you did want to burn a card, you could probably do a lot worse than this, though. But Sharpened Blades is also another, like, fairly decent one if you if you were feeling spicy and you wanted to push your luck a little bit with your stamina. I feel like Rip from the Flesh is probably the pick here. They're pretty close to each other, but neither of the cards are particularly, like, outstanding. I just feel like Rip from the Flesh has... Uh, it's a decent heal on the bottom here. And if you can hit that Strengthen, it's going to feel really, really good. And you're definitely going to wind up for a big uh, a big attack once you uh, once you do hit it. So, yeah. I feel like uh, Rip from the Flesh... Also, the 20 initiative here is, is another consideration. It's a good early initiative versus 40, which is you know, the beginning of that no man's land for me. So, that's another consideration here. The 20 initiative beats out the 40. So now we have another option to create air with the bottom of Rip from the Flesh. I think it's a good idea to maybe look to drop out Power Pitch. My only problem with getting rid of Power Pitch uh, this kind of early, really, is that that 60 initiative is the latest initiative we get access to. And sometimes you do need it. If we are going this direction, we are trying to go early as possible. And really, you know, 51 is, is not an initiative that we probably want to play either. So it does make this character a little bit awkward. I will say that without a 60 initiative at times when your allies say, hey, could you go kind of late? I would like to go kind of middle initiative and open the door. You might not really be able to entertain that. Um, it, it, I don't think it matters quite as much when you're playing multiplayer because I feel like in multiplayer, because the information is, is hidden, you know, you're not supposed to be discussing the numbers between each other. In that kind of situation, I feel like you don't, care as much because you just kind of adapt to, to what's happening in the scenario but when you're playing solo and you have uh, you're playing on increased difficulty and you need to plan your turns out very uh, methodically 
I felt like losing something like this might be a bit more of a concern. So that is worth considering. But for us, we are just going to sub this out now. It's, uh, you know, this card's really just a 60 initiative move three, create air. And we now got a 20 initiative potentially uh, heal and create air as well. And yeah, I think we're, I think we're better for it. So as we go into level five, please note if you are playing the Jaws of the Lion physical game, level five and onwards are technically spoilers because there is no sealed unlockable characters in the Jaws of the Lion game in the physical board game. Everything above level five, level five and above is actually sealed in the game and is behind a warning label. So if you are watching this and you are playing the physical game, I would kind of recommend that you stop now and wait until you actually hit that point if you are playing along and you're checking into this guide or maybe checking a little bit ahead. That is quite a big part of the game. Uh, don't worry, you're not missing out on anything. Uh, the game uh, is a little bit more forgiving in the build order. I don't feel like you need to know what your really high level abilities are in order to be able to play the, the character effectively or, or make lower level up decisions. But I think it's very important that I put that caveat in here because I don't want anybody stumbling into level five who maybe hasn't seen it before. So if you are playing the physical game or if you are worried about spoilers from the Jaws of the Lion game, this is the point uh, for you to stop. Okay, on to level five. Okay, so at level five, we have something a bit unique. And some of you might be scratching your heads thinking, hang on a minute, there's only one card at level five. And that is true of all of the Jaws of the Lion characters. This was like a unique kind of mechanic that was was inside the Jaws of the Lion uh, kind of game in which you didn't see the cards after level five. So from this point onwards, you get this card, uh, you get one of these. You do get two cards at all of the other level ups, but that'll be why. So if you're playing digital and you're thinking, hang on a minute, why am I only getting one card at level five? That's kind of weird. Well, actually, that's because there is only one card at level five for all of the Jaws of the Lion characters. So bear that in mind um, but we get the new favorites here which is our kind of hallmark card level five is the hallmark um, ability card for all of the jaws characters and i believe this has been a design philosophy that's now started to kind of flow through to frosthaven and other uh like a lot of the, the crimson scales characters have taken this slightly into their design philosophy as well where level five is like a turning point for the characters in which they get their like defining cards that kind of really define what it is that they do or improve upon maybe their early mechanics in such a way that it makes them uh, makes them like really more efficient or something like that so here we have the new favorite so this is you may add plus three attack wound and push one to any of your ranged attacks by marking it with your favorite after the attack ability is resolved when that target dies it will drop your favorite if you loot that hex, return your favorite to this active ability. This card cannot be active while the favorite is active. So you cannot have two <laughs> favorites active. Um, you can either have the favorite or the new favorite. This is 15 initiative and you've got attack to immobilize, move four and create air on the bottom here. So you've actually got a really good bottom ability here too. So this is a, a, a slight improvement, if you like, on the favorite. The favorite is just plus three attack. That's it. This also gives us wound and potentially a push one. Push one may be kind of useful, maybe not. Like we've said before about pushing enemies too far away so that it's hard for us to loot our token sometimes can be a bad idea. But certainly maybe being able to push an enemy into a trap if uh, the opportunity arises could be quite nice. 50 initiative and the, say the attack to immobilize move four is very nice here. Being able to just do that to an enemy and then run away or potentially just use this as a move for creates uh, air on 50 initiative is also just a very strong ability. So whether or not we get this attack to immobilize off or not, I feel like the bottom of this is also very, very strong. So. We are going to be taking the new favorite, Shock, at level 5, because it's the only card that we can take. So one thing that I think definitely doesn't really appear evident, and I feel like the, the wording on the new favorite may actually kind of, uh, may kind of confuse you slightly here on really what this kind of does, especially in relation to the fact that we already have the favorite. I feel like the natural conclusion to come to immediately, as soon as you get the new favorite, is to immediately say, okay, well, we swap out the favorite, right? Because it's just a straight upgrade to it. We now get wound and push one to it. Easy, easy choice. We now change this over. But 
realistically that is not uh, the the best way of kind of playing this character you know the, we have got two axes in our hands and if you see that the favorite and the new favorite are the names of our axes if you like we actually want to play with both of our axes so we do want the favorite and we want the new favorite here so in order for us to do that we're going to be taking away a different card we're going to be taking away disorienting barrage here just because the attack one has started to to kind of wane in usefulness now we're level five attack one is uh is really starting to drop off like i said the model is not something great uh we've also got some better targets for fancy hat anyway we're probably going to rather play ricochet with uh with fancy hat to be honest anyway so there's no there's no real reason for us to to hold out and we can only play fancy hat with one card so it, it kind of makes sense for us to drop disorienting barrage here the only th good thing about disorienting barrage that i find is that it is very good at drawing a lot of modifiers which can sometimes be quite good for uh for generating air if you're going like for a he heavy a heavy air build with this character because there is um you know quite a few that you can add for your attack modifiers and, and there's some good attack modifiers you can draw too but i think ultimately this uh, this kind of falls off so now that we have both of the favorites kind of in play, we can actually only play one kind of top active. Uh, so we can either play the new favorite or we can play the favorite. Realistically, you have uh, quite a few different options here. You could play either or, to be honest. I feel like the new favorite is probably the one that you will play initially because we don't have access to wound too much as we level up, though. That may switch. You may find that you want to go back to the favorite over the new favorite, depending on some later card decisions that we make. But right now, I feel like the, the probably the right move here is to play the new favorite as our kind of active favorite ability. And we're actually just going to be using the bottom of the original favorite to potentially just use the wound, target one adjacent enemy, and the move three and jump. You know, 17 initiative, move three jump is a very, very usable card. That's going to be something that we're going to get a lot of use out of. And if we really wanted to, you could just go back to playing this, the original favorite, and we could use this as a move four create air if you're trying to go for a more kind of air heavy build as well. So that's another thing that you can consider. But it's, a, I think it's a very important thing to talk here about this because I say when I initially played the character, I kind of like immediately was like, well, sure, I just swapped these two cards out like that just makes perfect sense to me i can only play one of them but actually the other half of these cards are really good and sometimes you're um sometimes you get really tunnel vision on on a card because you know it's got such a clearly uh clearly favored half that if you're not playing for it you kind of like forget the other half right but actually both of these cards have excellent bottom abilities so definitely going to be still included in your rotation okay on to level six Okay, so at level six, we've got uh, two cards again. So we've got two to choose from. We've got Bombardment and we've got Quick Turnaround. So Bombardment is attack three, range three, then attack three, range three, then attack three, range three. So three separate attack, range threes. Create air, two XP. It is a burn. It's actually a pretty decent kind of attack. The way that it's been worded, instead of it being like attack three, target three, we now have the option to maybe do this all against one enemy, which can be quite nice, right? Because you could, in theory, use the favorite here if you have poison on the enemy. This could be quite a nice way for you to do a lot of attacks against maybe a boss or an elite enemy. So it's got a lot of flexible options here. You don't necessarily need to uh, to target three different things. You've got a lot of flexibility. Target one, target two, target three. You know, it's it's, it's up to you really how you how you like to do this. And of course, you would resolve each attack individually as well. So let's say you do an attack three, range three on one guy and, and you draw your times two and you kill when you didn't really expect to. Then obviously you've got the flexibility to change onto another target potentially too. So yeah, I, I think the top is it's very flexible, but it's probably a little bit um taxing for for what it is you know it is nine damage which is a good amount and obviously with the favorite it's actually another three on top of that so it's actually 12. we have to be so careful with our burns on this character and uh yeah it just feels like these kind of tempting cards that they kind of dangle in front of us uh, yeah maybe maybe it's towards the end of a scenario if the bottom is any good so we've got move three all adjacent enemies suffer one damage push one target all adjacent enemies so we have got a little a little rumbling advance here right uh, it's a little bit better than rumbling advance because it's a move three rather than a move two and we got that little push at the end which could be quite nice to get some enemies away if we'd like to do a uh, ranged attack immediately afterwards right we can move towards some enemies we can do some damage to them we can push them away and then we can immediately do a ranged attack without having disadvantage because we're not next to the enemies it is flexible it does work well with what our character is set up to do 
but it's pretty underwhelming for for what is you know a level um a level six card bombardment is it's not a bad value card at all it's i think it's distinctly average and, and at level six maybe we're looking for something a little bit more hopefully something a bit spicier and uh you can see 11 initiative hanging out over here so uh let's uh let's check this card out so quick turnaround attack four range three push two so that's a pretty decent attack we can consume air to get plus one range and plus two push so that is uh potentially up to a push four there with range four attack four so that's huge that is a lot of push push enemies away before they get to act push enemies through traps before they get to act yeah i think uh this is a really good top ability paired with a really good initiative then you've got move three if your favorite is in or adjacent to your hex you may perform loot once so we've got another way here of potentially picking up the favorite token and uh that's just useful as well just being able to uh keep that favorite token cycling around you know the more value that we can get um from the favorite token the better of course so the more enemies that we can kill the quicker we can get it back to then play it again obviously this kind of efficiency engine that you are going to try and work with the favorite token uh using it bringing it back using it bringing it back all of those things are, are a really big um factor in how well this character performs and uh quick turnaround is another one that could potentially give you a quick turnaround get you that favorite token back again and allow you to immediately use it potentially right because uh it is a bottom move and loot could get you the favorite back so you can immediately then go into another center mass and attack something for six you know and if you have the new favorite out with wound and potentially a push as well so some really some really good value quick turnaround is a slam dunk of a card you know bombardment is unfortunately pales in comparison really it's a distinctly average card whereas quick turnaround is actually a very good card in all aspects great top great initiative great bottom for this character so yeah it's a it's a slam dunk easy pick so the card we're going to swap out here is actually going to be a follow through follow through has done you know decent work up to now but it is ultimately just an attack for at range four now for us so you know quick turnaround is already an attack for without having any kind of caveats to it which makes it another good card to open with the favorite you know we want to give ourselves plenty of options to be able to get that favorite token back and then have another card that we can use with it you know follow through doesn't really fit very well into that because we're obviously going to be attacking the thing that already has the token so if you're trying to get that token back and use it get it back use it get it back use it you know follow through could sometimes end up just being like you know with the favorite could end up just being like an attack five i know that sounds silly like only an attack five but it's only an attack five versus you know an attack seven so you know there's a lot uh to uh to like about quick turnaround over follow through so yeah, i think it's a pretty easy uh it's pretty easy swap here okay on to level seven okay so at level seven we have excessive force and we have brutalize so excessive force on your next five attacks targeting an enemy that has your favorite add plus two attack there's another one of those cheeky burns trying to tempt us right into just going all in on damage and this could be quite good against a boss i will say if you can get this going and you're specifically trying to kill a boss i mean this will add up but it's uh, it's again it's just trying to tax your resources I, I like the way that this character just keeps dangling things and saying hey you know can we tempt you with some extra damage sir it's like do they not realize we're already doing an insane amount of damage <laughs> we we don't need to burn cards to do an insane amount of damage it's a very all-in kind of character there's a lot of things that can uh, tempt you to to fly a bit too close to the sun uh which i feel like you have to be worried about and this is another good example of that so yeah not a, not a great value proposition for a character that is already doing a ton of damage and doesn't have to burn anything for it apart from the favorite of course so you know there's yeah it's uh not 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 so good uh the bottom here is move three uh, consume air attack two range two so that's actually like pretty decent right we get a move and then we get a, a cheeky attack tagged on the bottom there if we can create air now i haven't gone super heavy on the kind of air build here i feel like if potentially you are playing just the, the the standard favorite not the new favorite and you're actually using the bottom of this to make air a lot i actually feel like excessive force here is, is a pretty decent card because it just gives you 
another little attack that you can do just to add on top you have a good attack modifier deck you could potentially add the favorite to it if you wanted to you know you could potentially use the bottom here attack for two use the favorite to get the favorite onto them then potentially you could use something like repeat shot to be able to get the additional bonus you know there's there's some nice plays here that if you can reliably get this air going and if it is something that you are good at doing i feel like uh, can be done with excessive force bottom so although i'm very very lukewarm on the top i feel like the bottom actually has some sneaky potential here and in certain builds could really um could really do work the other card is brutalize which i'm a little bit more of a fan of on the top than uh, excessive force well quite a lot more of a fan it is attack four, but this is a melee attack. Add plus two attack and gain one XP if target has your favorite, then return the token to this card. So potentially a melee attack six, and then we can get the favorite back. And this is uh, this is actually pretty nice. Being able to maybe uh, get it back, then move away, and then on the next turn be able to do another attack. You know, it's six damage. That's a, that's a good amount of damage, but it is melee damage. So it is a bit out of odds and with other characters of this style i don't want to spoil any other um gloomhaven characters here uh, but there is uh, a few other characters that, that are sort of similar to this where they're mainly a ranged character but then occasionally they kind of get this odd card that turns up that's a that's a melee card and it's always weird having a handful of ranged cards and having one melee card because it's like when do i play it when when's the good time for me to do it uh, 22 initiative on this is is it's early-ish you know it, it is decently early but it, again it's not going to to play into a really nice you know late then early kind of initiative sequence like realistically you want a late card to play before this so then you can do a ranged attack then you can move up to the enemy then you play brutalize to, to do the damage and then you potentially move away you know or or potentially do a late move to then brutalize um on that turn and then potentially you then move away and then do a ranged attack or something so you can get out right you need to have those two back-to-back -back turns whichever way you want to kind of uh, do it to, to get that positioning right to really benefit and just without with 60 being our latest initiative that we now have actually got rid of now we're only got a 56 you know it's, it's just not really possible or it's not really reliable anyway so a bit of a shame i think um but i actually i think the top of brewer lies if it had the right initiative could be an incredibly useful card for this character and would be a lot of fun to play with but unfortunately because of the way it is i just find that you often don't don't find yourself using it for what it is the bottom is attack five range four and stun create air and one xp now this is actually a you know a pretty decent burn effect you know if you want a burn effect this is the kind of thing you know that you're, you're probably looking for as like a one-shot thing to try and save a scenario attacking uh, a real troublesome enemy for five at range four you know on the bottom of your card as well and adding stun so that they can't do anything and we all know that stun is so so useful that is a really good oops we've made a mistake we really need to deal with this enemy otherwise we're going to be in deep trouble brutalized bottom will allow you to do that so there is some flexibility here between these two cards i don't think either of them are you know like slam dunks like you're really super excited to play with them i feel like if you are going down the air routes you are playing uh the new favorite uh for the bottom action rather than the top you're playing this as the top instead then i feel like excessive force might have a spot it might have a spot for you but the problem with a lot of these things is that you know if in doubt i would always just kind of take the lower initiative because at least then i know that i've got a, a card on a low initiative that in certain spots will be able to do some things for me or i could always just use it as a move to 22 initiative if i really need to right whereas 47 move three ugh, it's not not great and uh, the range two as well on the consume air will mean you know maybe i don't have the opportunity to get that as much as i would like so yeah it's 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 i think it's a very awkward pick i would also feel like it's fairly um fair here if you wanted to go back and take some of the other cards i think out of all of the other cards that we kind of have here you might consider taking something like if you really just wanted another big move card you might consider going back and taking sharpened uh, blades you might consider taking fearsome efficiency for the bottom if you feel like you really want to try that at this point in time i felt like level seven is just a good opportunity for you to just take a card that you like the look of and that you feel like hey this is something that i feel like i might be able to enjoy playing with or i'd like to try out because none of these cards will probably really make your main rotation they, they may do they may not but it's certainly not something that you need to sort of jam in it's not going to improve your hand massively here it's just going to be personal preference like what do you like the look of so 
Personally, I guess I will go with um, excessive force here just because I felt like maybe I can get that move three and that attack two range two to do something. But also I feel like brutalize is fine. I think any of these are fine. Like, you know, it's just really just take what you want. The chances are they're probably not even going to make it into your hand. Okay, so like I kind of alluded to there, really, we're not actually going to be swapping out any cards here for excessive force. I could actually see potentially a situation here where Care Package could come out. Care Package is one of those cards where it just sort of hangs around because it's just useful. Just, you know, move three, heal one. You know, it's, it's just it's just useful. It's it, It's not really doing anything remarkable, but it just does stuff. So if you wanted to, you know, you've got another move three here on a... Uh, it's a worse initiative for sure but maybe with a bit more upside to what the, the bottom of care package is i feel like this would probably be the best swap here at this juncture but i could also see a situation where actually you'd like to keep care package in because maybe you're en enjoying having that little bit of heal and you're enjoying maybe healing some allies a little bit too if you're playing with a dedicated support in your party and so as the hatchet you really don't have to worry about these things then i feel like you're pretty safe to get rid of care package potentially but yeah again it's 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 not really improving anything here it's just a very kind like a lateral kind of change here to your to your hand okay let's go to level eight okay so at level eight we have shrapnel and we have camaraderie so shrapnel is attack two range three target two and wound and the possibility of consuming air to get plus one target here so potentially this could be a really nice target three attack two uh range three with wound also with fancy hat our fanciest of hats this could actually be additional damage again so it could be attack three on three things very very cool card very very good certainly what we've been looking for there is a little bit of redundancy here with the wound ability of course because we are playing the new favorite top here this uh, shrapnel kind of you know does exactly the same thing it's not really adding much to it it's yeah when we, we've already got access to wound so Certainly, you can get obviously wound on a few extra targets, which is nice. But if your objective is to kind of one by one assassinate things, then there's a little bit of redundancy there. Like I said before, though, you might actually consider just playing the normal favorite, in which case it doesn't really matter. You don't have that redundancy there. And this actually is a really good pick if you'd like to change. So as I alluded to earlier, there might be a point where you think, actually, I now want to go back to using the old one. Now it's a really good chance because potentially you could go for shrapnel, which then means that the new favorite doesn't actually become useful as a top act as the top action. And now you go to the bottom action get a lot of generation of that air and you've got the favorite uh top here as well um just doing that plus three damage anyway so yeah works out really really nicely uh so that's that's shrapnel top premium premium attack card really really good 37 initiative is yeah it's middle of the road for this character really uh, the bottom is the next five times you kill an enemy all enemies adjacent to the hex in which it died suffered two damage as a level eight effect it's probably a bit meh really i felt like it's uh it's probably a little bit underwhelming but that's fine because we've got the top of shrapnel which is just excellent so we don't really worry too much about that uh i guess in certain scenarios maybe the the, the two true damage might come more into play but when you're pushing level eight you know those scenarios where all you needed to do was like four damage to a living spirit and it would die you know through its three shield i mean they don't exist anymore you know those living spirits are rocking on like you know they're, they're they're close to like 10 health or something you know they're they're high they're much higher health now so that sort of two true damage just feels not quite as good as it used to so i feel like true damage is still obviously very good it, it always will be but recurring true damage is always going to be much better than having uh these kind of burn burn effects so yeah but shrapnel top excellent card uh camaraderie is also actually kind of a spicy number one i quite like as well so the top is heal three self then heal three target one adjacent ally and it is create air so a heal that i like i know madness uh, but it's actually a pretty decent value heal in terms of like how gloomhaven does heals you know, the heals have always been a little bit wonky in gloomhaven in terms of the costing you know sometimes you get these you know really really weird ones right with second wind which is heal six self burn like ugh. And then you get something like this and you're like, hey, this is actually, you know, pretty, pretty useful. I like little and often. Heals for me need to be little and often and ideally on the bottom. And that's, uh, that's how I like my heals. <laughs> uh, so this is on the top, which, you know, is maybe not the best place for, for a heal, but 
you get to heal yourself you get to heal out that's six so that's six amounts of life split across two characters it's a good card to play between rooms when you have a little bit of downtime uh, and you will certainly have a little bit of downtime every now and again so it's not a bad card for that but the one thing that i think actually really uh, sticks out about this card and i've been complaining about it all video is the initiatives we have a 75 initiative we have a late initiative which is uh, pretty, which is pretty uh, damn crazy, to be honest. This is something that we wish we had much earlier, especially if you went for brutalized potentially on your last, uh, your last pick. I feel like now camaraderie is looking, looking kind of good, right? Now, now we're starting to maybe consider that we can make that kind of back-to-back -back turn maybe work, and maybe brutalized could be something, um, could be something more. The bottom of this card is also pretty spicy. Move three, add plus two attack to your next attack this turn if you are adjacent to an ally so uh, that's a really decent buff right it's only your next attack it's not your entire uh, attack action so it's not quite as good as like fancy hat right because fancy hats like add plus one to all of your attacks this round camaraderie is just your next attack so it's very much single target focused good for hitting bosses good for obviously focusing damage using the favor on something so it is very much on theme with the character if your red guard is is tanking at the front of your party you can always just move up behind them get that plus two attack still stay safely behind them and do your damage over the top of them so yeah it's actually incredibly easy to do this uh, more so i guess if you're playing in four player or if you're playing with summons and things like that but to be honest, even a two-player, I think it's very, very easy and, and reliable to do. This is actually a really hard pick, I think, between these two cards. Camaraderie might just be the pick just because of the initiative to give you some sort of interesting play around here. But it almost feels like a little bit too little too late, if if you ask me. You know, you're level eight here. You're probably getting towards the end of the Jaws of the Lion campaign. You're probably getting close to retirement if you're playing this character in uh, Gloomhaven Digital in the main campaign and you're now looking to maybe move on to something else. You know, it's it's getting to that point with this character where, yeah, maybe if you plan on playing Guildmaster mode and, and playing this character at high level for a very long time, perhaps camaraderie will be interesting because over the course of many scenarios, it might give you a bit more interesting things to do and some more of uh, some interesting interplay in, in certain scenarios with your initiatives. But ultimately at this point in time i'm i'm gonna just go with shrapnel just because i want the big damage card i want the fun damage card i want to, to kill as many things as as possible um if you did go for brutalized though at the previous level i actually feel like camaraderie is, is definitely the pick because at least then you can switch brutalize on and it could be quite an interesting situation where you can play with that but if you've gone for the more kind of traditional just all in kind of ranged build like i have i felt like shrapnel was fine at this point in time we are kind of like you know we're, we're just our, our lot has been made we've had to put up with uh we've had to put up with not having late initiative to this point right what's another level you know so it's just a bit of a shame i really wish this initiative was on one of these lower level cards even on something like sharpened blades would have been would have been cool if we if we'd had some other card a little bit earlier with that initiative but yeah um we're gonna be taking shrapnel here but both cards are just are great picks for different reasons so um yeah just whatever play style you're going for and what you're whatever you're trying to achieve take what's best for you so the card that you can take out here i think you've got a couple of different choices depending on what your enhancement choices have been have you been playing the game if you have been using enhancements obviously if you're playing in uh the original kind of jaws uh campaign true to the box in the board game aren't playing with enhancements so in that case um this is probably a much more of an, an easier choice however if you are playing on gloomhaven digital or if you have bought enhancements into your your physical game then you're probably going to make a decision here based on how much gold you've sunk into one of these two cards so depending on if you've gone all in on center mass and you've actually increased maybe the the attack here and the range here then possibly you might uh consider keeping that still or potentially you could go to um ricochet here and i feel like ricochet is another one that's a good one for enhancement you could potentially increase the attack or potentially um you know add like wound or something like spicy to it if you really really wanted to so this is another one that could potentially be enhanced so you know for 
for sort of like argument's sake, I'm going to say here that I, that I probably have enhanced center mass over Ricochet just because it's a level one card. It's going to be a bit cheaper um, for me to do anyway. So let's just say that I've enhanced center mass. It's got 24 initiative as well, which is which is decent. You know, Ricochet's hanging out here at 56. You know, Shrapnel is going to be our new fanciest hat target, which then immediately means that uh, Ricochet loses some value here. So I feel like we can take Ricochet away here and go for Shrapnel just because we know the fancy hat is going to be used on Shrapnel from now on. Okay, on to level nine. Okay, so at level nine, we have Executioner's Axe and we have Heart Seeker. Two uh, maybe polar opposites of cards here at level nine. This one's going to be maybe slightly disappointing for some, I think. Maybe hoping for something uh, here at level nine that's really spicy and interesting. But uh, so let's start with Executioner's Axe. So the top of this is one adjacent normal or elite enemy suffers 12 damage and you create dark you get 2 xp and it is a burn a lot of people ask me why level 9 cards have xp on them it's because of battle goals so i thought i would just shoo that in here because one of the most common questions i get asked on stream but that's why because battle goals will say to earn x amount or less than x amount to, to try and earn your final perks but executioner's axe top here is kind of the ability that is uh, or, or one of the first iterations of an ability to remove the kind of execute abilities from gloomhaven so if you've been playing through the base game of gloomhaven you'll notice that pretty much every character has a execute ability this is a way for them to instantly kill an enemy sometimes it's very easy it's just like you consume an element or sometimes there's nothing to it at all you just do it um, but sometimes there's other conditions in play or requirements that must be met in order for you to to do them now they've been sort of known to be either too strong or too weak depending on on how they've been made and uh they, they just kind of like upset the game balance a little bit so um in terms of making it so that like execute abilities for example that were printed at level one are obviously just as good at, at level nine as they are at level one because they don't care about the health of enemies so in terms of scaling purposes they're really not very good whereas obviously damage numbers can be scaled over levels they can increase the number of damage that burns can do to try and uh, better kind of react to that so this is all pure damage this isn't an attack so this is 12 direct damage it's going to go through shield can't miss it's just direct to the figure ultimately this is obviously very weak when you put it alongside a lot of the other abilities that are just kills it is normal or elite so at least it can do everything apart from bosses and named enemies so there's you know a good um there's a good amount of things that this can hit but 12 damage for a burn you know we've had a lot of cards that could get very close to that if not more because of the fact that we have the favorite right this execution act kind of just like smacks in the face really because it has no synergy with anything that we do you know we, it's not an attack so we can't use the favor or any of our buffs uh we can't use anything like for example um we can't use the bottom of uh double throw for example right because it's not an attack so therefore we can't use double throw to make this even more it just i don't know it just doesn't really fit very well with everything that the character has done up to this point and it's a burn and yeah it's just you know we can hit things with the favorite and potentially get strengthened and then a hit for close to 12 if not more <laughs> you know sometimes with other things so it it to me it's just it's a real underwhelming level nine um ability to me and it's good that they're trying to fix the problem which is that execute abilities are too strong but this ain't it chief in my opinion so yeah mo moving on uh the bottom is if you killed an enemy this round return your favorite to its active ability and gain one xp and this is just an, in my opinion this is another wasted opportunity uh here um i would have loved this to a function as a round effect that said something to the effect of every time you kill an enemy this round return your favorite to its active ability and gain one and make it an active that you play for the round and then it goes away into your discard and you can replay it right a non-burn but every time you kill an enemy this round return your favorite this will mean that cards like shrapnel for example you could add it on each and every time so you could add it on to the first target if you kill the first target then you can apply it to the second target then you could apply it to the third target like it just feels like it would play much nicer into some of the other cards that the character has 
Yes, maybe a little bit too strong, but this is level nine we're talking about. Who's hanging out at level nine for too long? And, and I, 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 I strongly believe that level nines should just be fun. And I don't feel like we should worry about them balancing the game too, too much at level nine. Because at that point in time, players should be considering retiring if they're wanting to push the game forward. Obviously, in Jaws of the Lion as well, that's not really the case. So... Jaws of the Lion, the characters were designed to be a little bit more simple, I would say. Like, you know, the game was designed as a, as a more of a starter set. But the, by the time you get to level nine, you know, the people who have been playing this game, you know, they've, they've probably become pretty well versed in the game. They probably have a pretty good understanding. So I think we can definitely um, expect that they could handle a more complicated level nine effect. So I'm a bit disappointed to kind of see that. I can understand maybe why they didn't, because they didn't want to have to put the rules in and they didn't want it to be confusing. But ultimately, I felt like they've ended up with a weaker a weaker card here and, and a missed opportunity with this particular card. So, I mean, it kind of stands to that reason here. We're going to be going for the other card then, which is Heartseeker, which is attack for range four and stun. Consume air to get wound uh, for one XP. Now, stun is a great ability. And uh, this is uh, a, an attack with a stun and potentially a wound tacked onto it as well. Again, a little bit of redundancy maybe with the fact if you're playing the new favorite, obviously. Uh, another reason why I think you actually want to switch back to the old favorite when you're at high levels because really, you know, this... You can just use your, your air instead um, to, to get the wound off uh, on this. High quality, super premium control with a bunch of damage attached to it. The 32 initiative, I guess, is not, not fantastic, but the ability itself is just outstanding. And, and it's a bit of a shit. Like I said, it's a bit of a shame because the other level nine is not even going to get a look in because of this. Like, I don't... Like, it's almost as if you may as well have not printed to another level nine. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, it's to that kind of degree where it's so obvious that it's, yeah, a bit disappointing. So, yeah, Heartseeker is the pick. Uh, the bottom of this is the next four times you kill an enemy before Maheal 3 range 2 bliss action. I don't think anyone has ever played that. So, I wouldn't really worry about that. I mean, it's in no situation would you ever really want to play that over the top, uh, I think. So... Yeah, Heartseeker is the slam dunk, easy level nine pick. Kind of unfortunately, really. So at level nine, you can swap out really kind of any of your attack cards here that you find are not really doing the business for you. If you haven't upgraded sensor mass or for whatever reason, you're not playing enhancements, then it kind of makes sense that the center mass is the card that you flip over. So if you are playing the board game, then I would consider just taking center mass out at this point in time. If you're playing just the, the, the rules of the board game, uh, take take this out. I, I don't think it's worth it unless you've enhanced it loads. You could consider taking, you know, just really anything out here. You could consider taking repeat shot out. You could consider taking rip from the flesh out. Um, you know, it's really is kind of down to your own pick here. Excessive force might not even be worth it anymore because perhaps the 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 air is much better used here on heat seeker. So that's another thing that you know, if you are using this, you could always just flip this out as well and bring this. But a lot of it's going to come down to what you've how you've designed your character at this point in terms of enhancements, items, and things that you feel comfortable playing with. Okay, so there we have it. There is our full build hatchet. I will put up on screen now for you board game players all of the cards at level nine that I've chosen for this build. So if you'd like to pause the video here to take a closer look, uh, you can do. Okay, so let's take a look at perks. With perks, the hatchet is pretty straightforward. You have some pretty nice perks that you can get. You definitely want to remove your minus ones first with consistency. Unfortunately, you can't get rid of all of your minus ones or your minus two. So if this character does sort of need to lean maybe a little bit more on strength and uh, you are going to have some disappointing draws still even at high levels without having strength them but you do have lots of ways of getting rid of those plus zeros and turn them into more useful plus ones with a bit of additional damage also you can change some of them here into some stuns as well which is quite nice there's some stuff you can do also you can improve your plus ones to plus three down here i feel like this character is very straightforward in terms of perks really the only consideration i think you need to kind of make here is that if you are going to be going for a more kind of air heavy build in which you want to be using that element you're gonna probably want to go for gale you don't want to go early also bear in mind that if you do attack with advantage you know this plus two is going to trump stuff like stupefy 
and numb so there's some other things to sort of like think about right because when you attack with advantage it's always going to be the higher value that's going to win in these situations so there's also some awkwardness there potentially with uh with gale and if for example you really want to try and land like a poison on something well if you're using advantage a lot chances are you're going to get gale a lot so there are different things you have to worry about here if you do really care about mathematically doing perks correct i do recommend really that you just google a, a perks calculator uh, there's quite a few different resources online to do with this personally i don't like to math out perks i, I just take what i feel like i want to take and what feels good at the time of doing it and you know i don't try and put too much stock into into doing perks but i know a lot of people do and they really like to try and mathematically get these correct and there is a quote unquote correct way or correct order of doing perks but for me i'm going to go with a consistency first here I'm then going to go for Gouge with the plus uh, one wound because this wound could essentially equate to another point of damage and maybe even further damage down the line. So it's sort of like a plus two with maybe some potential of extra damage as long as the target isn't already wounded. Then we can go up to Mislead, which is increasing uh, an extra sort of two damage on the plus zero here. Early on in the game, especially at lower levels of difficulty, um, really the game is about just making sure that you draw positive modifiers, right? You'll be very, very happy in Gloomhaven if you can draw plus one very consistently. So you don't really have to worry about kind of, you know, shooting for the moon here and going for hack really early on. Also, maybe going for Gale early on and padding your deck uh, with a lot of extra cards. I feel like it's a fairly safe strategy here to just continue to replace these plus zeros with, with plus ones that do stuff. That's fairly consistent. If you do want to go heavy on the advantage, though, you've got eagle eye goggles. Maybe you've got items that are going to help you use those goggles very often. Perhaps you've got um, other characters giving you strength. And perhaps you've got bless or things like that in your deck or, or something like that. If you've got blesses and a lot of blesses, you'll probably going to want to keep your deck more lean than you are going to be wanting to, to make it bigger so gale is one of those kind of cards where i feel like um it is uh it's a good card to go for if you are really trying to hit that air and you are using goggles a lot or you're getting strength on a lot it's, you want to be able to consistently hit this plus two then then that's pretty good but otherwise a very safe sort of perk strategy here is just going to replace these plus zeros with plus ones that are going to be useful that's just moving your deck in the right direction and you can't really go too wrong with that and then obviously hack can be something that you also bring in a little bit later on as well so maybe you do a couple more of these and then you can maybe move on to hack that's another pretty safe perk strategy but like i said if you do want to mathematically work this out and do it perfectly plenty of resources out there for you but if not i do actually feel like perks in this character are very straightforward just make sure you do consistency first and then really aside from maybe stupefy and numb and maybe elbow most of the others are, are pretty good perks so on items i'm going to do a little spoiler free section here to begin with just so that people who haven't played uh deep into gloomhaven um will, will get any of these items but also people who are playing like the jaws of the lion kind of board game will will get a, a general idea of some good early game items to pick so for your head items you're really going to want something like eagle eye goggles that's really going to be what you want especially with fancy hat and disori um, disorienting barrage i think that's a really good little combo there make sure that you um, or try to at least not draw that minus two in that missile those minus ones are at level one on that ability because it's it's pretty rough in terms of body item here you've got plenty of options really you just want to be elusive here maybe something like studded leather could be an interesting pick for you just a very simple thing you don't have any sort of slam dunk body items i would say immediately there are some future ones which we will get into obviously in the spoiler section but there are better options later on but to begin with you're just going to want something that's armor armor related or potentially invisibility related um without you having to um you know take any negative modifiers for because of course you don't have the perk to to stop that in terms of hand items, if you're playing uh, Jaws of the Lion, you definitely want to look at the Throwing Hammer, which is the one that stuns. It's like Warhammer's uh, cousin that allows you to add stun to a single target attack. I think that that's really, really good. A single target ranged attack. That's a really nice little option. There's also some higher level options from Jaws, which are pretty decent too, which we can talk about a little bit more in the spoiler 
option but yeah in terms of hand items realistically you're going to want something that's going to combo off nicely with your ranged abilities so also uh piercing bow if you're playing gloomhaven would be a really good option uh early on at least um to ensure that uh, when you do come across something like like a living spirit at least you're going to have some way of dealing with it there is a decent amount of shield in uh jaws of the line the campaign there's a decent amount of shield there's a decent amount of wound and poison that the enemies give to you too so heal items plus you know piercing items can be actually uh quite quite good in uh, in jaws of the line content leg items you're just going to want more movement that's all you're going to need uh weathered boots of course if you're playing jaws of the lion that's all you got access to at level one pretty much so get that plus movement is going to be really important specifically for the bottom of retrieval so that's really what you're saving those boots for is to play with retrieval that, that, that's all you need them for so uh so make sure make sure that you get some because you're going to need them uh small items stamina potions of course goes without saying mana potions potentially to be able to make that air element on the odd turn here and there when you actually really need to trigger it and maybe you didn't get around to making it for whatever reason that could be a good option healing potions of course power potions very good on this character too because you do have some good aoe's some um, sort of multi-target like attack threes that's when power potions really start to, to sort of pay off is really when you're starting to attack three or more things so power potion would be another good option and or maybe a little health potion as well so there's also um you know some some other good potions and, and items small items that you can get later on specifically in the jaws board game version which are not going to be in digital but you'll find them when you get to them so it's a little bit awkward talking about items because of course there is uh there's some items that are in jaws board game that aren't in digital and there's some items that are in digital but aren't in the jaws board game so it's a bit of a weird situation that we're in here but hopefully that is enough of a steer for you guys to uh to make your choices okay so now let's get into kind of like the spoiler section where we can talk a little bit more about the higher prosperity level items from gloomhaven so we'll talk about all of those here okay so in terms of head items as we've already discussed like eagle eye goggles Hawk Helm is a really good option. Empowering Talisman, I think, is a very good sort of um, option for when you have a really powerful small item that you need to recur or you want to recur. Of course, Pendant of Dark Packs is very good. Protective Charm, actually surprisingly good in uh, in Jaws of the Lion content exclusively. However, you do have your nice little heal, right? So you might not necessarily need that. You've got Care Package, which does give you a little bit of a heal as you move around. So possibly a bit of a waste there. Expensive as well, 60 gold. So you've got, you've got a few different options here. I think uh, Horn Town could be something that you consider doing. You do have a couple of big moves. So occasionally you could actually use this but it is melee attacks only so you would need to be maybe playing like brutalize or something like that high level so there's maybe some funny things you could do around that but uh yeah maybe maybe not i mean necklace of teeth could also be an interesting item i haven't got all of the items unlocked here because this is a, a save that i'm using exclusively to, to to show off these characters and do the kind of guides for these characters so i don't have every item that's available in the game unfortunately unlocked here but uh, necklace of teeth could also be sort of an interesting small item for you because you will be killing a lot of things but you also might not benefit necessarily from the heal so yeah there's uh there's definitely um some good some good head options for you and of course if in doubt iron helm is always there as a, as a way of stopping you from uh from getting unlucky maybe against against an enemy in terms of body items so body items uh, i actually quite like um chain armor is um is a, an item that was added in jaws of the lion and uh, I think it's actually a pretty a pretty decent low level thing, considering that you don't actually need to have um, any kind of uh, negative conditions affected to it. It is only for a round though, so it's a little bit weird. Um, it's not as good, I'd say, as some of the other ones. So because it's just one round and you kind of have to choose when to play it, it's it's a bit weird. Like on your turn, you have to use it. So it's a very specific use case, uh, which I think makes it a little bit awkward, but. If you don't have any other options or if you're playing like the um if you actually are playing the physical game then possibly this could be could be your only option obviously i think cloak invisibility is is a slam dunk because if you do get yourself into danger really instead of just shielding one just go invisible for the turn i know you can do this multiple times but realistically chain armor will be for that time when maybe you screw up or something like that and cloak invisibility is just better for 
for those kinds of situations. So I would do that. Obviously, you can't wear anything like chain mail. I do think something like studded leather is probably, it's probably in general the better pick. Like between chain armor and studded leather, I like the fact that studded leather, you just don't need to remember to activate it. Chain armor, you do. So, you know, if you go sort of, your initiatives sometimes are not always as early as they can be. You know, sometimes your initiatives are like in the 20s and 30s. And perhaps enemies go before you, which is before you can activate ch chain armor. So I feel like the reliability of studded leather in particular is actually kind of better here for that kind of situation. In the future, you will have some like really other great options. Um, Robes Vivication is a really good item that I think you can use. It is available in jaws as well as it is available in jaws physical game as well as it is in digital so robes v vacation i think is actually a really strong body item for you to use that i think is probably probably as good as it really gets for you some way of increasing your damage you could also potentially use something like cloak of phasing or of course um blinking cape to be able to give you some extra movement if you really wanted to hand item now hand item is really where things get kind of like spicy there are some some really good options on hand item for this character depending on what you're kind of playing, what version of the game you're playing. So Barbed Axe is is pretty is pretty nice. It's pretty spicy. During your attack, add wound the entire attack action. Uh, it's kind of weird that this works on ranged, but it does. So as an early game item, this is pretty good. It's only one-handed as well, which is really nice. I feel like most people are going to be going for the throwing hammer here as well i think that's a very good early item to get as we discussed already so that's a good one unfortunately the upgraded or changed version of hook chain is not in the digital version i'm not as sure as to why so it's called barbed chain and it was actually just a one-handed version of the item that was a bit cheaper kind of made the item a bit more playable in my opinion so that could actually be an option and if you were to use something like close cuts i know it's a card that we're not particularly playing in this build but there are some things you could do there you could pull an enemy towards you use close cuts to attack them and then move away so there's a way that you could maybe make close cuts a bit, a bit more of a usable item so you've got you've got that if if you're playing in physical, I don't know why it's not in digital. I'm, I will speak to the devs and find out why, but it, it isn't. Maybe just because it's too similar to what we already have, but I do think it makes like hook chain is unplayable pretty much or just never really played. And it actually makes that ability kind of playable and interesting. So I think it's a shame not to have it in the game. Other hand items you want are bombs, of course. You have some pretty large attacks, even without the favorite bonus. So if you can use a, a big bomb, I think that's going to be really good. So volatile bomb uh, and also uh, improvised explosives, is it? I think it is. Unstable explosives, sorry. So unstable explosives versus uh, volatile bomb. Both of these items really, really good for your character. Uh, piercing bow of course as we've discussed already for stuff that is um that it has shield especially if you're playing regular gloomhaven content with the hatchet i think piercing bow um, goes up a lot in value if you're doing that because you're going to be facing a lot of shield especially if you play on increased difficulty against things like guards and and uh and uh, you know you get a lot of guards you get a lot of living spirits you get a lot of demons so no not as much uh demons in jaws of the lion there's a lot of demons with shield in uh in regular Gloomhaven. So that really puts that that item uh, the, over the top, really. For your leg items, really, you're going to want your standard kind of... You're going to go for weather boots if you're playing the, the board game. That's all you've got really options for. But of course, you're just going to be looking to upgrade these as soon as possible to your boots of striding. You know, then eventually you're going to be kind of moving up to your boots of sprinting and eventually your, sorry, your boots of dashing, then your boots of sprinting, then your rocket boots, all of those kinds of things. Anything that makes retrieval easier to play is really where where you're at with this character so for small items there's going to be some cards that will significantly improve like how you can play multiple attacks are going to be really good on this character so of course all of the busted items that are usually busted are still very very busted on you rango brutality is very good of course because you can immediately get the favorite into play uh, and then be able to use the benefit from this straight away so you could play the favor and a bottom and then play Ring of Brutality to immediately use an attack to be able to use the favorite buff. Get yourself going straight away from turn one. Sort of saves you that turn of having to play the favorite, really. Uh, Ring of Haste can be quite nice because you have a couple of things that where you might not want to move. Uh, so it could give you the ability to, for example, if you manage to kill something um, and you didn't acc you accidentally didn't play 
the card that gives you the heal two and the strengthen perhaps you could use ring of haste to then play that to then get the strengthen so then you're good for the next round so that gives you a bit of flexibility with some of those kind of like if you killed an enemy style triggers ring of haste will help you do that because just don't worry about playing it and then when you do trigger it you can then use ring of haste to play that card and get that benefit right so there's a there's some good play with ring of haste there too of course anything that can reset your items is going to be really good so moon earring star earring all going to be really really good because being able to recover your boots or your body item or your head item if you've got goggles or helm or a hawk helm it's also going to be really good and certain hand items that you might use as well if you are using like barb chain for example then they can be reused as well or if you're playing um something like uh uh, if you're playing like a wand or something like that potentially like you could consider using a wand maybe for air probably not really necessary but you know if you if you want to so there's a few things there um obviously some of the powders are quite good as well so you got doom powder you got stun powder both very very good some of the new items here i don't think are particularly great so for example um oak charm a bless for 30 gold and uh you know a small a small slot mm, mm, no not really there i don't think so i would avoid this item i think maybe maybe in uh in jaws of the lion it actually had a bit of value because there wasn't that many small items to really pick from but certainly in uh, base gloom haven when you've got you know you're spoiled for choices this is uh certainly not going to be something that you'll ever use um you've also got a few other small rings that they bought in like ring of restoration for example no i don't think you will be using this i mean just use healing potions they're cheaper um you know but second chance ring of course very good uh you know obviously uh stamina potions as well very very good and if you do get some really broken items you're probably going to move over to having like pendant of dark packs but you know we're talking about wishlist stuff here right at the, the the very end of your uh of your sort of session when you're level nine okay let's check out enhancements so enhancements for this character are kind of a little bit a little bit odd because you have some enhancements that uh, you might do for example on the bottom of the favorite here to make this a little bit better but then you end up wanting to play this card for the top like it's a little bit awkward because i feel like upgrading this to like a move four jump is actually pretty nice pretty cheap uh enhancement to do but ultimately it's you know going to end up a card that you're going to be playing in your active area probably more times than not so maybe if you do make the decision hey I am not going to be playing. I'm going to be playing the new favorite constantly. Then maybe you could uh, consider upgrading this to a move four. I think that's quite nice. One of the things that I wish we could do is improve this, but we cannot. So retrieval, we just we just leave as is. Sensor mass is a card that we kind of use throughout the entire game. So there's a good uh, good reason to upgrade this card because we are going to use it front way up to very high levels. So attack three here, you can increase that to attack four. Uh, you can increase the range as well will make it a little bit easier maybe to hit but range three is pretty decent i would do the attack first before the range um you've also got potentially um some of the other sort of lower level things so potentially power pitch you could increase this to a move four i think for 30 gold not too bad especially if you really want some guaranteed air and you're enjoying having a 60 initiative so that's something that you can do a lot of the other cards though that we stay all the way through aren't actually um very upgradable really uh, if you have a look at like the sorrenting um barrage we could increase this up to a target but that's 100 gold that's a lot just for maybe a little bit of extra benefit from fancy hat I, I don't think it's really worth it i mean maybe super wish list stuff if you've got loads and loads of money but uh yeah i i wouldn't um I wouldn't really um consider it personally I, I don't think it's it's really worth it for what it is uh, you've also got uh, ricochet of course which we've discussed another good one a bit expensive maybe but when you're looking at these kind of like high-end stuff i think it's reasonable to expect that you'll be able to get maybe a couple of enhancements across a few cards you know maybe like two to three in in total so ricochet you can potentially increase your attack here could go all in for the poison uh, poison here if you wanted to or the, or the wound wounds obviously going to be better here um you know you really you want to be putting poison on like a bottom attack so that you can reuse it because obviously this goes to a different target so the poison doesn't really do much so it is probably better just to go for the attack here and you've got wound in other places save yourself the gold and and buy an item or or a different enhancement with it um but that's that's really it I mean, to me this character doesn't actually have that many amazing enhancements to go for they've kind of done a good job here of really kind of um 
of mitigating any kind of super broken enhancements with this character there is there is some nice ones i think you could also potentially when you're looking at like for example like you got care package here you can increase this a little bit you know it's kind of nice you got you got some some things you can do there if you wanted to you can increase the range on this if you wanted to be a little bit more nice to your buddies but prob probably unlikely you, know, you can't upgrade fancy hat at all so yeah, it does feel a little bit more limited. It's a bit more fair, if you like, in terms of enhancements. But this character is very un unfair with a lot of its cards. So, you know, I don't think uh, we should feel too sorry for ourselves. But yeah, it's a couple of, uh, couple of easy enhancement opportunities for you there if you've uh, got the gold. Okay, so there we have it, guys. There is my guide on the hatchet. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I think this is a really interesting character, a really good character. Quite a simple character at its core, but it is a big damage dealer. And uh, you know me, I like my characters that do a lot of damage. So this was a character that I definitely gravitated towards uh, very quickly in Jaws of the Lion. And I was like, yep, I know I can have fun with this. So yeah, it's a very, very strong character. Quite easy to play, but still has some complexities. It's one of those characters that's kind of fairly easy to play okay. But to do really, really well at, you do need to be have your kind of concentration going you do need to be focused because you want to make sure that you get that favorite token kind of back and then use it again as quick as possible you don't want to leave it on the floor for too long right every sort of turn that it's left on the floor unclaimed is a turn you're not doing damage with it right so there's a bit of an efficiency game going on with this character too which i really like but yeah apart from maybe some of the level up decisions maybe not being quite as good i think that there's definitely uh, a trend a little bit um with some of these characters where because they needed to be more simpler abilities uh, because it was a starter game and there's definitely a tendency that that they've taken these characters and made them maybe a little bit easier in certain aspects that might have shrunk the design space really so these are kind of like gloomhaven characters and especially if you've gone from playing maybe like crimson scale stuff on tabletop simulator or in person or if you're you know thinking about playing frosthaven for example these characters are going to feel a bit simple in comparison to that but that doesn't necessarily mean that they're not good or fun i think they've got clear identities and yeah hatchet i think is a, is a very strong identity and a, a lot of fun to play if you did get this far thank you so much for watching i really appreciate it if you want to join the patreon go over to patreon.com slash mandatory quest or go to mandatoryquest.com where the merch store is and there's also a link to the patreon in there i'm going to hopefully get to a milestone so that we can do a guide on envelope x we'll do a video on that just for the patreon viewers because it is something that is quite secretive and before i've always said i didn't feel comfortable about doing a video about it but patreon seems like the right kind of place for it where you know if we can get to that goal and people are really keen to, to see me do it then we can kind of keep it a little bit like our own little secret over on patreon yeah and also i'll be releasing videos kind of a week early so if you're watching this on the day it comes out chances are you're already in the patreon so i really appreciate it thank you so much for supporting also usual shout out about twitch come over to twitch.tv slash mandatory quest if you want to watch me play jaws of the lion live which i'll be playing loads of over the next kind of couple of weeks but if not thank you again so much for watching i will catch you in the next video bye I think so. Yeah. yeah. Oh, 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 o